Um, at this time, we'll call the meeting to order. Would everybody please rise? First, look the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
many years. Uh, really done the work which I have in that I appreciate dearly. And um, this honor is well deserved. Yeah, I said roll call. Mr. Chapeles? Yes. Mrs. Bellani? Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Marcusi? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. By item four, the Lizard Board of Education hereby authorizes its attorney and administration to take legal action challenging the approval and or authorization by the Commissioner of Education, the New Jersey Department of Education, and the other parties of the charter application of Union Arts and Science Charter School, I own schools, to be located in the city of Linden. The board further authorizes its attorney and administration to take any other actions necessary to effectuate the purposes of this resolution. I move item four of the attorney report and seek a second. Discussion? Second. Okay. Discussion? Okay, roll call. Mr. Sabalas? Yes. Mrs. Sabalas? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Parents, um, I just urge you, please, please, before you choose to send your children to this charter school, or if you're thinking about it, please, please have a conversation with your school principal, with Dr. Robertosi. I know it looks like it may be a wonderful place um, by their brochures and everything that they're putting out there. Uh, Linda Public Schools gave my daughter a great education in IT, and she can make a beautiful brochure just like that. Um, please make sure that you do your research and you find out what these charter schools are all about and make an informed decision. That's it. I, that's all I can ask, and I, I, any one of us will be willing to talk to you, as well as Dr. Robert Tozzi. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Mr. Tavales? Yes. Mrs. Bellani? Yes. Mr. Wolrad? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mr. Martucci? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Okay, just put that in the report. Thank you, Mr. Collins. <coughs> I'd like to recognize, as uh, <clears throat> Mr. Collins already has, I'd like to once again recognize Mr. Uh, the Honorable Judge John Budak, who's here tonight, his daughter Megan Mohan, uh, husband Anthony, and uh, beautiful grandchildren, little uh, Bella Bella. Um, it's really uh, an honor that the board has bestowed upon uh, Mrs. Hudak for her 18 years of volunteer work, but if you asked her, it was her job. 18 years of volunteer work to this Board of Education, to the students and to the citizens uh, in Linden. Uh, it's the very least that this board could do, considering all that uh, your wife, uh, your mom, and your grandma have done for this district. So uh, thank you for being here tonight, and uh, welcome to the Susan L. Udak Board of spoke about earlier regarding a charter school that is uh, attempting to open up in the city of Lincoln. I hope uh, that you have seen um, some articles that have been published recently uh, in the newspaper, in the Bourbon Record. We've posted those articles online on our district Facebook site. Uh, you can find them on my Twitter page, uh, which show some very disturbing uh, allegations that this district and myself are making uh, against the people who are attempting to open up this charter school. A charter school is a public school. It is a publicly funded institution that comes out of your taxpayer money. The purpose of a charter school is to provide parents with a choice. And while I don't have any problem with a parent having a choice in where they send their child to school, 
this charter school that is attempting to open up in the city of Linden did not come from the parents in the city of Linden. This charter school is attempting to come to Linden by a, a professional uh, private corporation who specializes in opening up charter schools for profit. They are not opening up a charter school here in Linden because our parents have demanded. In fact, if you get a chance to read those articles, you will see as part of their application, this district, this Board of Education, and myself, we allege that they committed fraud. In fact, when you apply to open up a charter school in the state of New Jersey, you're required to show parents' interests as part of the parent interest that they showed in their application were 61 affidavits allegedly signed by parents and residents of the city of London. When we investigated those affidavits, we found many inconsistencies, some outright forgeries. We sent our attendance officers to uh, houses, that were listed on these petitions. One of the addresses was a vacant lot. Another address was a foreclosed property. When they went and knocked on other doors, people said, yes, that's my name, but that's not my signature. I've never seen that document. Very disturbing. So let me reiterate to you, if you get a chance, please go on our district Facebook page, do some research on your own about the I Learn Union County Arts and Sciences Charter School that's attempting to open up in Linden. It's received partial approval from the Department of Education. We have an appeal still pending. It may receive final approval in July. And as you can see by the board resolution that was just passed tonight, uh, this board is authorizing our attorney and this administration to seek any other legal avenues that we can to prevent this school from opening. Uh, finally, let me reiterate that if a parent has any questions about what a charter school is, about what they claim they can offer that we don't, I want you to reach out to me personally. I don't care if I get a thousand phone calls. I will speak to every one of you. I will meet with any parent who has questions. And I will show you that uh, you can get the best quality education for your child right here in the Linden Public Schools. Thank you for that. Thank you. Now on to the good stuff. We have several students here tonight. And my favorite thing about this job is being able to invite students and parents to board meetings and recognize them publicly. So, Mr. Collins, would you please join me um, downstairs? Oh, no. So, how many of you know that we teach Russian in the Lincoln Public Schools? Not only do we teach Russian, ladies and gentlemen, we teach six foreign languages here at Linden High School, six in the district, and we have five foreign exchange programs. If your children attend Linden High School, they can have the opportunity to go to Spain, to go to China, to go to Italy, to go to Germany, and Mrs. France. We can't go to Russia, but Mrs. Schultz, we're working on it, aren't we? I will be on the inaugural trip to Russia. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to celebrate uh, several of our high school students who participated in the annual New Jersey contest of spoken Russian that took place on March 20th at Drew University. Uh, we have been competing in this competition for 21 years, and this year, as we always are, our students were very successful. Uh, we brought home three gold medals, five silver medals, and three bronze medals. The State Olympiada of Spoken Russian is a challenging and unique event. It consists of a speaking part, a reading, a discussion part, and a recitation part. So you have to speak Russian, write it, 
at Yale to write. It's pretty impressive that our students, if you're in Limited, can do that and be successful. Um, it's just amazing. So at this time, I'd like to recognize Mrs. Schultz, their teacher, and ask her to come up. Mrs. Schultz, would you please come up? the names uh, of the students as a, we want to practice some Russian too.
Just this past week on uh, Sunday and Monday, we have a couple kids that get received individual honors. Like I said earlier, I've been here 20 years. For the first time since I've been here, we have a young man as a junior who's named First Team All-State All Groups. We've had a couple other ones that were First Team All-State as seniors, never as a junior. And that's uh, Tavon Jones, step on up there. First team all group for uh, first team all county, and uh, like I said, thank God we have back for another year. Colleen Crawford was named first team all state group for Oregon men. Joe, Joey, step up with me. Joey was named second team all state group for. accomplishment as a team this year. On um, Monday night, Colleen Crawford accepted, or well, he announced, he's going to accept a full scholarship to Merrimack University in Massachusetts. passionate about. So I'd like to congratulate all of you on a great show. 
Thank you all for your dedication to the arts of women. I'm going to ask Mr. Cosby to come up to say a few words and to introduce you. Mr. Cosby? Good evening, uh, my name is Mr. Cosby. Uh, this is uh, an honor that was unforeseen and greatly appreciated. Uh, this is my 10th year here at Linda High School. I'm a former student here uh, and came through the theater program. Uh, actually, went to school with Mr. Topolesi's daughter. We marched together uh, and acted together as well. Uh, theater had a uh, an amazing impact on my life. It changed how I thought about things. It made me more confident, made me more sure of myself and who I was as a person. Uh, so every day that uh, I had these young uh, ladies and gentlemen in my class, I tried to teach them life lessons that will help propel them forward into the future to help them be successful uh, human beings. Uh, and I think we did that with this show. This show teaches uh, about how to come together instead of to fight each other. Uh, it teaches about being an individual instead of conforming. Uh, it teaches about just loving each other for who they are. Uh, and I think our students did a great job in portraying them on the stage. I'm very proud of them. Uh, I would like to introduce them all as one group. There's over 50 people involved in the production. I don't want to hold you up too long tonight once you get to the important information coming up. Uh, but uh, these young ladies and gentlemen are very amazing. Uh, we were, like they said, we worked extremely hard and we were grateful that we had a wonderful audience to perform uh, in front of each night and uh, we hope you can come out to see more productions in the future. Thank you. Can I have a cast and crew of High School Musical please come on.
performance for you uh, from High School Musical, When There Was Me and You, uh, Christian Okinda will be singing the part of Troy, and Natalia Senpai will be singing the part of Gabriela Montez, and the cast will be singing back.
So we're fortunate enough to have a member of our board who is achieving just about everything you can um, on the uh, state board level and as a uh, board member. His name is Greg Kapileski, and I would like him to sit down my This it says Certified Board Leader awarded to Raymond Kapileski, Linden Public School District. The highest level of individual certification in the Board Member Academy is Certified Board Leader. You must earn 20 credits for a total of 60 credits from all of the core areas and serve as a Board County Officer. Um, it is given to you on this day, March 29, 2017. And let me tell you, that's some feat. Congratulations. <laughs> Our entire board wishes you well, and we respect you greatly for your infinite knowledge of everything board. I think we should double the salary. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Second. Second. Roll call. 
Mr. Tobolesky? Yes. Mrs. Galani? Yes. Mr. Wilrath? Yes, to all except I abstain from number 16, Stacey Minota. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Deviano? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mr. Martusi? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Uh, next, we'll have Management Operations, Mr. Kopulewski. Thank you, Mr. President. The Management Operations Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, presents the following 35 motions to the London Board of Education for approval. Items 1 and 35 are requirements. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Kopulewski. Um, it's that time of year where we start to get you know, retirements coming in. I expect more next month. Uh, Jacqueline Alonzo has worked for the Linden Board of Education for 25 years. Uh, she has taught as a second grade teacher at School Way for the vast majority of those years. She holds two instructional certificates, elementary school teacher and teacher of English. Uh, a truly special teacher who is very wise and sees tomorrow in every child's eyes. That's what we say about her. Sandra Namias was started her career as a bilingual teacher of Spanish at School 10. Uh, and then at school too. Uh, she holds a teaching certificate in bilingual education, elementary school teacher of English as a second language, and Spanish. And I just received this retirement letter uh, today from uh, Joanne Hamilton, who started her career in 1972 at schools uh, 5, 4, and McManus Middle School. She was then appointed as a guidance counselor at Linden High School. In 2010, she became the supervisor of People Personnel Services, guidance, and then director in 2014. She holds a certificate in director of school counseling, nursery and elementary school teacher, principal, student personnel services, and supervisor. 45 years in this district, undoubtedly her career has impacted many students with us in the Linden Public Schools. I'd like to uh, publicly thank these employees for their years of service and wish them a happy and healthy retirement. Thank you, Mr. Tavlos. Thank you. Uh, item two is to accept the resignation of the following staff. Item three is to amend board actions on past management operation reports from uh, July 26, 2016, uh, January 5, 2017, January 24, 2017, and February 22, 2017. Uh, item 4 is a transfer to following staff effective July 1st, 2017. Uh, item 5 is to approve the following needs of absence. Item 6 is to retroactively approve the following staff for office assistance during evening parent teacher conferences on March 15, 2017 at their contractual rate. Item 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 33, and 34 are appointments of staff to various positions. <coughs> Item 11 is to approve summer hours for following staff members to refurbish science kits for the 2017-2018 school year at the contractual rate, of course not to exceed $3,000. Item 22 is to approve additional summer work from June 27th to August 31st for the following counselors at a per diem rate. Dates to be mutually decided by counselor and principal or director. Item 23 is to approve additional summer work from June 27th to August 31st for the following attendance officers. Dates to be mutually decided by attendance officer and director or principal. Item 24 is to approve additional summer work from 20, uh, from June 27, uh, 2017 to August 31st for the following nurse dates to be mutually decided by the nurse and director. Item 26 is a motion to terminate employee 916-17 for calls retroactive to March 17, 2017. And item 31 is to approve the following technology volunteer for the 2016-2017 school year. Uh, Mr. President, I move management operations uh, 1 through 35 and seek a second. Second. Roll call. Mr. Chapolesky? Yes. Mr. Milani? Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes, all except that abstain from number 20, Stacey Middleton. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Viviana? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mr. Martusi? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. 
Fine. Next, we have support operations. Uh, Mr. Alvarez. Thank you, Mr. President. The report operations committee on the elimination of superintendent schools and the business administrator or secretary to send the following motions to the Linden Board of Education for approval. Item 1 through 6 of the monthly board business for approval. Item 7 is amending board action taken on prior board meetings as listed. Items 89 are the acceptance of funds as listed. Items 10 and 11 are approval payment of 23868 to the Kenilworth Board of Education for Choice Student Transportation and $198 to the certified court report for the transcriptions taken at the planning board meeting on February 14, 2017. Item 12 is the approval of a change order for the Main Street Restoration Project at the Linden Academy of Science and Technology. Items 13 and 15 are the approval contract to Nickerson Corporation for Seoul Middle School Locker Replacement, Sears Corporation for a copy machine at school number five, and the Union County Educational Service Commission for the transportation of non-public students and out-of-district special education students for the 2017-18 school year. Item 16 is approval for students to attend Linden Public Schools at a tuition basis for the 2017-18 school year. Item 17 is the approval of the school lunch price list as mandated for the 2017-18 school year. Item 18 is to authorize the business administrator to submit a grant application to the New Jersey Schools Insurance Group for a safety grant in the amount of $30,596.33. Item 19.1 are resolutions in accordance with the NJC 6A 23A-18.5, allowing Linden Public Schools not to require the listed private schools for the handicap to charge students for reduced or annual pay lunches for the 2017-18 school year. Item 22 is the approval of bids and quotes received on the dates as listed. Item 23 is to declare the listed items as surplus and to allow disposal. Mr. President, I move item items 1.3 and respectfully ask for a second. Second. Mr. Tabaleski? Yes. Yes. Mr. Bolan? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Badiana? Yes. Mrs. Burke? Yes. Mr. Martusi? Yes. Mr. Carlos? Yes. Our planning policy is Burke.
Mr. President, I move items 1 through 17 and respectfully ask for a second. Second. Oh, oh. Mr. Chavaleski? Yes. Mrs. Villani? Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Bebiana? Yes. Mrs. Birch? Yes. Mr. Marcusi? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. All right, next we'll have planning policy. Uh, Mr. Walrath? The Planning and Policy Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, presents the following motion to the Linden Board of Education for approval. For first reading, 6171.4, Special Education. NJSDA overhauled, restructured, and reordered the entire policy to be more consistent with the current code. For second reading, 5119, transfers. Policy was updated to be more consistent with the current code. 5131, Conduct and discipline. Policy was updated to be more consistent with current statutes and regulations and added information regarding equity. 5131.5. Vandalism and violence. Policy revised to be more consistent with revisions to the law. The reported, reporting section was changed from annual to biannual. 5134. Married and pregnant pupils. Added information related to equity and non discrimination. 5141. Health. Policy updated to be more consistent with current codes. 5141.3, health examinations and immunizations. Added a section on parent guardian notification. 5141.4, missing, abused, and neglected children. Title was changed and content was overall to be more consistent with the code. 6010, goals and objectives. Updated the policy to be more consistent with code and added information regarding equity requirements. 6114, Emergencies and Disaster Preparedness. Update, to update content to be more consistent with current code. 6140, Curriculum Adoption. Content updated and added sections on African American history and the Holocaust genocide. 6141, Curriculum Design and Development. Updated to be more consistent with current code and added a section titled Criteria for Curriculum Approval. The policy also was revised to include electronic textbooks and other materials. 6142, subject fields. Updated policy to be more consistent with revised New Jersey standards. 6142.4, physical education and health. Policy was updated to include updated standards. Information regarding equity and suicide prevention was also added. 6142.10, internet safety and technology. Policy was updated to include Revised standards and to add information regarding equity. Mr. President, I move um, I, for the first reading item one and for the second reading items one through ten and respectively ask for a second. Second. Mr. Chapleski? Yes. Mrs. Galani? Yes. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mrs. Benyana? Yes. Mrs. Burge? Yes. Mr. Martusi? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. All right, this time we'll move on to the reports of special committees and delegates. Our state delegate, Greg Topolowski. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have a few items. Uh, there's some pending legislation, uh, legislation, and it's blocked, so I can't get it. Uh, legislation, uh, one of them is dealing with changing the amount of credits to uh, have a nurse certified uh, to be a school nurse. I believe it's a reduction to 21 for a teaching nurse and 15 for a non-teaching nurse. Uh, another one has to do with uh, giving students uh, that participate in certain clubs and curriculums uh, the ability to run a varsity letter. Uh, uh, that's, and there's two others uh, that I can't recall off the top of my head. Uh, the other thing is on Saturday the 8th, I will be attending a conference which deals with the uh, amendments that are being set for the delegate assembly. Uh, my understanding is there's seven. I have not yet received them. Uh, Mrs. Volani pointed out a couple months ago uh, that, and so that I don't know when they'll be available. I'm going to be emailing them sometime uh, in the next week. Uh, once we take actions at the committee, I believe they will become available to you guys. So when you get those emails from school boards, uh, look at it. Uh, uh, some may be ho-hum, some may be controversial. 
So uh, if you have any questions about those, you can discuss them with me uh, so that I can vote the way you want to when I attend the delegate assembly. Uh, that concludes my report. County delegate? Yeah, county delegate. Uh, we had a, a meeting, uh, was our meeting on the 15th was spelled out, so it was moved to the 23rd. Uh, it's called Unsung Heroes, and every high school in the county uh, nominates a student for an award, uh, and uh, that was held on the 23rd, and uh, off the top of my head, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Ortoz, you remember who? Who was it? Who was it? Yes. It was Matthew Patrickowski. Matthew Patrickowski was Lyndon's unsung hero. Um, and it's a very interesting night. Uh, fortunately, there were conflicts uh, with our board members and they weren't able to attend. But uh, when you hear some of the stories of some of these kids, you wonder how they got through school. And uh, they were amazing. And uh, it's. The whole concept is they make the school better just by being students. Uh, our next uh, county meeting will be May 17th, uh, which awards uh, for achievement will be presented, including one to our very own Mrs. Volani. No. This, uh, I have trouble with this award because it's, I think, only the second year that it's being given out. And it's for new board members. So you can only earn it. The first year you were elected. First two years, yeah. First two years? Yeah. And so uh, they have to achieve a certain number of credits. They have to attend a delegate assembly uh, and some other things. And our own Mrs. Bellani has achieved that recognition. I'd like to please the candidate for Thank you. Everybody go. Our Educational Services Commission. Um, I was an, unable to go this, uh, and just wanted to my stead. Uh, it is a regular meeting on the first of the month, and we had the opportunity to see, uh, see a presentation by Hope Weinstein, who is a speech therapist at Crossroads, and some of the innovative therapies that they're doing there, integrating uh, verbal behavior with the Miller Method for children on the autism spectrum. And it was also the budget meeting, which we, the board approved uh, for the superintendent to submit the budget. There's also two new positions to do reorganizing their structure, one of which is an assistant transportation coordinator. And the other is a director of curriculum and instruction. So they have a few changes going on over there. And that ends my report. Thank you very much for coming. Issue that may have happened in. They felt, they felt that the, some of the, tra the transportation issues would do better with different people and added a different level in there so there's more oversight. Okay, ESP for parents, Ms. Bird. Thank you. Okay, so we held our meeting uh, March 1st at the Board of Education office. We had 14 moms and two dads. Um, three parents were from school one, two from school two, well, representing them, I should say. Um, five, I'm sorry, two from school five, two from school six, four from school nine, six from McManus, one from Seoul, and one from, or, I'm sorry, three from the high school. Um, some of the current concerns that they expressed during our meeting uh, was that they were not getting out the board meeting notices, the reminders early enough, and um, they also wanted to hope we were able to stay by board meetings. <laughs> um, they wanted to know if we could possibly promote teachers. Um, calling at least once a year uh, for a good reason or sending an email out at least once a year um, as positive feedback um, just so that parents can hear something nice from the teachers or even in the beginning of the year at, you know as a hello and welcome to my class. Uh, there were some concerns about some windows that were broken over at school six. Uh, there were also concerns about um, 
the electricity in some of our buildings because they were asking because it is so hot uh, during some of our um, warm weather months uh, about air conditioning. Uh, they also wanted to know if we could do another security meeting. Uh, there was some discussion about um, an overhaul of some of the girls' bathrooms in McManus. Uh, they're still having some concerns and complaints about that. Um, they were concerned about uh, at school five, there were some parties um, that they wanted to have some dances and there were some seminars and workshops that were kind of made mandatory. Um, and they wanted to know if that could possibly change and they could just have their parties and not have mandated uh, seminars and workshops. Uh, they also asked if we can again look into the water fountains um, instead of having actual water fountains if we could do the bottle refilling um, fountains for the, the students. Um, penmanship was also uh, brought up. The kids um, are having still a rough time signing their name and they wanted to know if we can emphasize more uh, time on uh, the children learning how to uh, write. There was uh, again some concerns with cafeteria issues. Uh, they wanted to know if um, we had any programs in the building that helped children learn how to dress for uh, interviews and things like that. Uh, there were some concerns about gates not locking at school number two. And um, some of the positive things they brought up was that there was a family game night at McManus. And they said they had at least 20 children and 30 parents that attended. And they said it was fabulous. Uh, the pep rally, they said Mr. Marchica and Mr. Fingerlin were just unbelievable. The student versus faculty basketball game, they said that there was really a passion out there. The children were playing. The teachers are having a fabulous time. I just want to say before I uh, end my report that we discussed asking and we said to parents please come out and see us at the board meetings and I'm very happy to say that we do have more parents from our EST tonight here at our board meetings. So thank you. Our next meeting will be Wednesday, April 5th at 6.30 at the Board of Education building. And Pomptonian will be our guest speaker. So we hope that you come out and we hope that you um, have discussions with us because we'd love to have you there. That concludes my report. Thank you. EST for high school? Yes. Uh, we held that meeting on Thursday, March 23rd. We met in the library. Uh, Mr. Piccini and Mrs. Lewis are the advisors. We had in attendance one freshman, three sophomores, two juniors, and three seniors. Two were gentlemen, seven were ladies. Uh, the children were still having some concerns about uh, the TVs in the cafeteria not being on or not working. Um, there were some uh, concerns about puddles in the girls' bathroom by the lunchroom. Uh, there was con some concerns about the dance floor and the safety of the dance floor and then it's breaking up and then it also is being cleaned on a daily basis. Again, we had some issues with uh, Pontonian <laughs> and um, one of the main issues that was discussed at this meeting was the children felt that there was um, some emphasis on other um, related activities that are going on in the building and there's some other um, sports and activities that aren't really getting much recognition. So they were hoping that maybe that can change and there'll be some more support and more enthusiasm for other sports and other programs that are going on in, in the um, building. They wanted to know if they could have a spring pep rally for the winter and spring sports, as well as including the theater program, the band, and the orchestra uh, to promote those sports. Uh, um, they also had um, some concerns about the bleachers that were broken in the gymnasium. <coughs> Uh, Friday news, they wanted to know if that was going to be played again on the TVs and the cafeterias uh, because it's still not being um, played on there. 
Yes. They were also concerned about the stop sign on Gessner and Summit Street. They said it's very dangerous. And the crossing guard, they, they're looking to see if we can get a crossing guard or somebody there because children are crossing and it's becoming very dangerous for them. Uh, some of the things that they, they did um, have highly or were positive about is that, that the lines were much faster in the lunchroom. Um, they loved that we acknowledged the theater program. And they also loved that we do come in and we do talk to them and we do sit down and discuss their concerns and that they are being listened to and that they are being addressed. So with that being said, our next meeting with the student EST is on Wednesday, April 26th at the high school in the library at 8.15 in the morning. And that concludes my report. Thank you. EST Middle School. Um, sure. Mr. Topolesky and I met with, um, this was our first EST for middle school, um, and the schools chose 15 diverse uh, students, five from each grade level at each school. Um, first we met with Seoul, um, and some of the concerns were that the bathrooms were not being uh, kept tidy, um, and that they do not have enough time to eat their lunch. Um, if they're too loud in the lunchroom, they say that they get screamed at by the uh, faculty in there. Um, they said that they think it's a problem that if they get up and move uh, their seat in the lunchroom that they get in trouble. Um, if they finish their lunch, they feel that they should be able to go and move to another seat and sit with a different friend if they want to. Um, they don't like wearing their IDs at all. That's all they kept really talking about is that they don't like keeping them around them and if they forget them, uh, that they can't get food uh, if they don't have it visible either and sometimes they're sent to the back of the line if it's not out and visible which we try to explain to them that it's only for their own safety and that it helps us identify if there's anybody that doesn't belong in the building um, presently. Uh, they do uh, want to participate in different community events and school events and they want to get together at the park maybe um, with the school, with their grade, maybe walk to a park nearby, they said. They would love that. Um, they said that there's a long wait period to fix their computers, um, and they're hoping that we could try to help fix that problem. Um, they said that, if, that they can't cross chat with their friends on Canvas to find out about homework if they miss the, if they miss the, the day of school, and then they really have to rely on the teacher getting back to them that night which if they don't get back to them right away, then they're going to be penalized for not doing their homework on time. So they want us to see if we can look into having that feature on Canvas so that they can cross-communicate. I'm not sure what they do. I thought they can if you're in the same class. That's if you're not in the same that's class. That's just what we were told by the students. Um, they said that um, they really they really want to come together at the school um, and do something for the less fortunate kids that are in the school that need school supplies, they want to collect um, and do a drive for anybody in the school that needs um, any help. They're, they're more than willing to help and that they uh, want to do that. They said that they don't really have any field trip at all in 7th and 8th grade and they really would like, even if they were able to go to one educational field trip, they said that only in 6th grade you're able to go to one. They, we were really impressed because they are requesting a career day, um, that they want to have a career day and if they can learn about different professions early on um, and even some information about college later on down the road. Um, and then finally, they would love to have another pep rally. They said that it was really great to see everybody so excited and pumped up and energetic for that. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the McManus one, but Mr. Kapileski did. The, the topics and themes in, in both schools were very similar. The one thing that, that impressed me about the students, uh, Anthony led with some of the, the, the themes that you hear from our high school, but that's not what they started with. They started with the, uh, the curriculum, they started with the selection of electives, they started with, uh, in some cases, not, being, not using the computers enough. Uh, Making courses more interesting, they were they were a little upset about the lack of electives, uh, but this is a work in progress, and I told them that. 
And uh, what's that the course that uh, was a little controversial, the one that we had for the kids? The seminar. The seminar course. Some of them were upset because as eighth graders, did, it was a first year for seminar, and they didn't get it as eighth graders, and now that's not going to happen for them at all. So that was some of the interesting topics uh, in both schools. Uh, the, the kids, uh, especially Salt came really well prepared. Uh, they knew what was what we were about, and uh, they had already talked to some of their classmates, and they knew that they were supposed to get the information back to their classmates. One of the students had a journal that she was compiling from her classmates. To yeah, to yeah. So I mean, these kids are. Uh, it was. I was surprised. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect with the uh, with the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, uh, especially since my entire career I only taught eight, and eight through. 12. So I didn't know what to expect with the younger ones. But they were well prepared and they were well versed. Uh, that concludes our recording. Okay, ESK for special ed, Mr. Martucci. Frank, in the uh, beginning of the month, uh, the special service department under the direction of uh, Dr. Stefanik had a uh, meeting in school one and it was offered to the parents of Lyndon and also the surrounding parents. Uh, regarding some issues that uh, a parent may have dealing with uh, social security disabilities, a child with a disability, graduating high school, and also for those, some of the parents that possibly are on the verge of homelessness. And they put them in contact uh, with the state and the uh, county officials, the grants and the monies that are available to them, which they had no idea, and uh, guided them through that, gave them the contact people which they needed to get to these uh, agencies and apply for these monies, <clears throat> and then also uh, basically give them an open door policy to these officials to go there personally, and they can guide them through the operation. It's very rewarding, and it was interesting to see, due to the fact that the monies that are available on the state level and the federal level, that parents that are in this category, uh, whether it be kids that are out of school or in school, that they don't know that are available to them. And it was really, really great to see, and uh, I learned a lot, so if I know anybody, I can express where to send them, but uh, it was a great, great program uh, for parents, and uh, my congratulations to the Special Service Department on a job well done. Thank you. All right, do we have any unfinished business come before the board? All right, any uh, board member comments or new business? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to go back for a moment. Uh, I know when I um, spoke before about the charter schools, um, I wanted to bring up another point. Um, our children, of course, are our babies, and they're always going to be our babies. Uh, but I feel that if you're going to send your child to a school, you are able to maybe talk to your neighbors and ask them, how is school number two? How is school number five? Do you like the teachers there? Do you know the principal there? You can get some feedback from your community on where you're sending your child to school. If you send them to this charter school that's going to be opening up, we don't know anything about them. So you're going to be entrusting your children with people that you don't even know anything about. So please, please think about that and think about your choices before you make them. And again, I'd like to say, reach out to Dr. Robert Tosi and have that conversation if you have any concerns or any questions that you need answered. Um, I also would like to um, let you know that I happen to be in the high school with the student EST meeting and there happened to be a drill lockdown. And for some of the parents that might still be a little uneasy about the safety and security in our buildings, I have to tell you, I felt completely safe. I did not know it was a drill. It was done exactly like it would have been done if it was real. We moved um, from the library into a locked classroom. The children were wonderful. They did everything they were supposed to do. The staff was phenomenal in making sure that the children were in that classroom, locked down safe, that you couldn't see into the classroom, the doors were locked. It was just, I have to say I'm getting goosebumps now because it was an experience that 
you would have to experience to know and understand that your children are safe in our buildings. So please, no, I was there and I, I was safe and I think the entire building did a wonderful job in that lockdown. Um, I also wanted to say that the baseball started out their first uh, scrimmage game today and they did win. Uh, it was a 5-4 to four victory, so congratulations to them. And um, that would conclude my report. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Yeah, uh, I want to make two comments. The first one uh, deals with the resolution we passed earlier about naming this auditorium uh, about, uh, after Mrs. Sudak. Uh, what I would like people to know is that after Mrs. Sudak passed, Dr. Robertosi was contacted by no fewer than two different school groups wanting to know if they would be able to do something uh, in memory of Mrs. Sudak. And as a result of that, and, and some board members, I think, made some comments. Uh, so we have a policy that was developed a couple of years ago, uh, and we met that policy. And we did form a committee. It included uh, two students, uh, two teachers, a, uh, an admin two administrators, and myself. And we met here and discussed it. Uh, the reason that the tree is going over by the resource center is because that's something that the, the kids wanted to do. And so rather than say, well, no, we're just going to do this, uh, we thought that that would, would be too. And it, especially since the, 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 resource, the uh, resource center is going to be for science. And, and soon, so I can't tell you, my kids didn't go to school six. I did with Mrs. Hudak because we were in family science type all the time. And, and that just something that was. And, and so that's a little background on how we got to where we are, where we were tonight. Uh, the second thing is uh, I want to congratulate uh, Mrs. Hamilton. Uh, Joanne and I uh, know each other for some 30, my daughter's 34, 32 years. Uh, our children uh, were watched by a, uh, a wonderful woman who took school children, and her name was Mrs. Morrow. And she lived across the street from school one. And she had my daughter and, and uh, Joanne's son for a year and a half, I think, or something like that, until I certainly not until my daughter was old enough to go into uh, pre-K or nursery school. So uh, I want to congratulate her. Uh, and wish her the best. I know she's going to have a great time because I know I am. <laughs> I, I just have one. Um, I'd like to just uh, thank um, Delena High School Principal Yelena Horry for handling um, a unique situation. Actually, I called her after hours um, and there was a unique situation with the parent who was having severe uh, health issues and was extremely upset on the phone and I just want to thank her because right away she handled it extremely well and resolved the issue and left the parent at ease and I thought it was a very nice job that she did. Anybody else? I will ask for uh, so moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.